today, and we are uh, ready to go here on All Indiana Bets. College football season is upon us. The bowl uh, games are coming up, and we are here to get you ready for it. Plus, we've got plenty of picks to hand out on a busy day of college hoops right here on All Indiana Bets. I'm Jason Hammer. I'm the one you can count on being here every single day, every single show, and we're going to make so much money today, we're going to tell everybody we're better than you. I'm Scott Long. I'm the one that people are willing to hire to leave this place at times. <laughs> and I got back from Louisville, from the tornadoes. I am here to bring it right here, right now. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Let's go. Woo! This is All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook and Lunazul Tequila. Feed the wolf. Welcome, everyone. This is All Indiana Bets. Thanks for starting your Saturday with us. I'm thrilled to be joined, thrilled, I use uh, loosely, by Jason Hammer and Man, Scott come on. Long. Now, listen a second. Come Great on. to be with hey, you guys. I love <laughs> being here every Saturday. Yes, even with you, Hammer, with you, Mackenzie. It's a great time to be here. I love that. Uh, Grandpa, you might want to put your readers on because Mackenzie's not here today. <laughs> what are you talking about? Put, put your glasses on. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. I was just looking at the hair. <laughs> Wait a... Who are you, by the way? Scott, I'm here for Mackenzie. I'm Rachel. And, what do you uh, do? Hammer and I go way back, uh, actually. I don't, I don't like that to so begin I with. So knew, I knew that Mackenzie would need a break today. Maybe sure. not as much from you, Scott, but definitely, definitely. from Hammer. Here's a little fun fact. <laughs> Rachel was not pregnant when the show started today, <laughs> but then she saw me in this blazer, Boom. and kapow, look Pow. at that. that, that. I gotta that tell happened. you something that I all automatically already like about you. You're the first <laughs> co-host that we've had that kind of fits in with what we yeah. do. Yeah, I'm just here with our stuff. to add to the dad bod. We, yeah, we've looked, the dad bod is a nice term. Right. And don't you hate when you hear dad bod and you see that on Instagram and a guy's got four instead of the six pack and he's still like really fit and it's like right. what, what yeah. kind of LA dad bod is this uh, that's a Midwest anorexic here so. it's Rachel could literally give birth any moment and so. I'm still the big one on the yeah. show <laughs> <laughs> that is no, so not true, but yeah. I am joining you guys from Indiana Grand. I am the racing analyst no. there. Racing Rachel, as uh, Hammer uh, deemed me a long time ago. Who gave so. you that awesome nickname? I can't believe I'm giving you Now I know who you are, Racing Rachel, racing right? Rachel, that's I just right. got the gun. That's a good sign. <laughs> that's right. All right, you guys, let's get into it. We now know the matchups for all 42 bowl games, which will be played over the course of the next four weeks. And here in the Hoosier State, we've got a trio of teams that will play in the postseason. It all starts on Christmas Day when my and Hammers Ball State Cardinals take on Georgia State in the Camellia Bowl. And then five days later, Purdue will head down to Nashville to square off with Hammers Tennessee Bulls in the Music City Bowl. And then on New Year's Day, it's number five Notre Dame versus number nine Oklahoma State in the Fiesta Bowl. So guys, you see the spreads there on your screen and I'm gonna ask you to rank all three of our local squads here from the team you're most confident will cover to the team that you're least confident will cover. Hammer, you're up first, bro. All right, so I'm gonna go to Rocky Top Tennessee first. I think this was gonna be a great game. And when this line came out originally, Purdue was a favorite for just a couple of hours until the jumper, the odds makers jumped in and completely went over the top with Tennessee. Now, the reason I want to jump on this early is because I think Purdue's best two players are not going to play in this game. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. So that's why I've got uh, the, uh, the Purdue Boilermakers number three on my list. I don't think Purdue wins without their best players. The one I'm hanging my hat on here is Notre Dame. New coach, new energy, wants to make that statement right off the bat. I think Notre Dame won. I think Ball State wins. I like Ball State, uh, but I just like Notre Dame a little bit better. So, Scott, I'm going Notre Dame one, Ball State two, and then Purdue number three. I don't think Purdue wins at all. This is a tough little battle for Indiana schools. Uh, I, uh, I was kind of flipping between Notre Dame and Ball State, but I'm like, I really don't think Notre Dame's gonna beat Oklahoma State in that battle. I feel like Oklahoma State has a lot of the practice, uh, a lot of the pressure that was that national championship. Are we gonna get into it? They played such a strong 
uh, season. I feel like Notre Dame has just been squeaking by. They got a new coach that's never coached a real game. I know the fans and, and the team are really excited about their new coach. I like Ball State getting the plus four and a half. When we do our bowl picks thing, I think that's going to be one of my better bets. Uh, Purdue, I'm very nervous. David Bell uh, basically was the difference maker on almost every game that they won against a good right. opponent this year. So uh, that would be my list, one to three. All right, the bowl games don't kick off until Friday, but we're going to go ahead and get in on the action. Right now, we're going to give Hammer and Scott one early bowl bet each. These are the plays you're going to want to lock in right now. And Hammer, I understand that you'd like to make an official wager on your Tennessee Vols. Rocky Top Tennessee. Oh, please don't sing that song. <laughs> please do. Um, again, I like Tennessee. They're bringing their quarterback back. Uh, Hendon Hooker, who had a great season in the SEC once he finally won that gig for the Tennessee Vols. I like Tennessee in this spot simply because Purdue is going to be without, most likely, their best player on offense and their best player on defense. David Bell, Carl Loftus, both have, both have declared for the NFL draft. Chances are they're not going to suit up for a game that really doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, these are guys that could both go day one of the NFL draft. Carl Loftus could be a first round pick here. I don't see them risking it for the Music City Bowl. And I think David Bell's absence, like Scott pointed out, that's good for a touchdown. Very few players in America that aren't a quarterback are good for a touchdown. David Bell is one of them. So you remove him from the roster, which we think is going to be the case. I like Tennessee to cover here. All right, Scott, so you're up next. Give us your early bowl pick here. Yeah, now this, a lot of times I give people stats and information and things of that nature. This is all about vengeance. This is <laughs> like, uh, what was that, um, Billy Jack, where he was walking through, kicking butt. Like, this is a vengeance pick. Mike Leach was the coach at Texas Tech. He created that program and changed everything. The, and he was basically dumped because a few of the boosters all of a sudden thought, oh, you know, we could do better than nine and three and eight and four. And they've not done that since. And Mike Leach also is PO'd because he thinks the Red Raiders owe him a lot of money. Oh, well, they're and bad. <laughs> so eight and a half seems high, but Texas Tech is a six and a six team in the Big 12. I love Mississippi State. Eight and four were in every game this year. I think Mike Leach is a great football coach. He's got a month to put some whoop something oh. on them. Oh, whoop I love Woo. Mississippi State in this game. The drama, the Phil revenge. Phil Floor and Phil oh. thought of Scott. Yeah, I know. Right wow. Oh, I want to your mouth, young man. Yeah. Leach would have paid my fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two picks down. Still plenty more to come. We're going to be handing out winners for the next hour here on All Indiana Bets. But if you want to get in on a head start here, locking these plays in, go to our website right now. I think this is so cool. All of Hammer's picks and Scott P Scott's picks are already posted. And you have to do, all you have to do is scan that QR code. There I didn't get this. Look, I didn't even get this for my show. Right in the corner of your screen, click on the link to today's show, and you will be on your way to the bank in no time, guys. But for right now, it is time for our first break. But please don't go anywhere, though. We are just getting started here on All Indiana Bets. When we come back, we'll look ahead to the college football playoff. The guys will tell you who they are betting on to win the national title, plus our picks for today's Army versus Navy game. It's all coming up next on All Indiana Bets. Great. All Indiana Bats is presented by Lunazul Tequila. Feed the wolf. Oh, welcome back to All <laughs> Indiana Bats. And as true to their word, the time in between breaks is the best. We are getting ready for bowl season, which of course will culminate with the college football national championship game right here in Indy next month. Here's a look at the four semifinalists along with their updated odds. Alabama is now the favorite to win its second straight national title at plus 120. Georgia is right behind the tide at plus 130, followed by Michigan at plus 800 and Cincinnati at plus 1800. So Scott, 
If you had to place a bet on one of these teams to win it all, who would it be and tell us why? I already have placed that bet Ooh. and I put it on Michigan because of the money. The, the money that you could make on this. The Alabama, Georgia, they're a coin flip in that game. Uh, I don't like the money on that one. I feel like Michigan, these are not as good of SEC teams. You have to think of the last three years where we had NFL first round picks at Clemson and at Alabama and at Ohio State. That's not this group. There's not one great quarterback. I guess you could say Alabama has that quarterback. I'm still not even as sold on him as some of, he's definitely not a Trevor Lawrence. So uh, I would go with Michigan on that, even though I do think the favorite is Georgia. That uh, overall, uh, I just don't think Alabama can do that twice. Oh. So right, I'm going to go with that. Alabama here because they have the easiest path, right? Okay. So there's two separate ways to look at this. True. Who you think is going to be the yeah. champion and who has the best value. Right. Alabama has the easiest path. If they get by Cincinnati, which they should, then you're in the national championship game. That's all you're asking for is a fighting chance to win. But the value here, like Scott said, is Michigan plus 800. Right. Michigan might be the hottest team in college football right now. So if you think about this from like an investor's right. standpoint, the smart play I think is Alabama, but the big time money rides on Michigan right, right. here. So Bama's technically the pick, but the value is all over Michigan. All right, guys, and don't forget, Wish TV is the local official broadcast partner of the yeah, college football we are. playoff host community. That is cool. Yep. So we that means Anthony have Calhoun gets to play in the game. Little AC. Oh, AC gets to play. I don't <laughs> know if he knows about that. So we will have you covered all the way up until the championship game on January 10th. Before we get to all the bowl games, though, we do have one regular season game left on the schedule, and it is a game unlike any other. Any other. We're talking, of course, about the 122nd meeting between Army and Navy. We used to play those back at Ball State days, you know. Yeah. It all goes down today at 3 p.m., and you guys both have a bet on this game, right? Scott, tell us yours. Yeah, speaking of 100, is it how many games in a row? This 182nd. Okay, here's how I would explain this. Um, it feels like that's how many times this game has gone under. <laughs> 15 straight games this game has gone under the total. It's insane. This It was 34 and a half. It's up to 35 now, but 35. So it's like, why would you go against a 15 uh, game trend? Here's why. Because Army scored 56 points against Wake Forest this year. They gave up 70, okay? Hey, who's the best team that either one of these teams played? Cincinnati. Army scored 20 points against Cincinnati. I love the over. I don't care about the trends. Everything has been manipulated by the bookies because, hey, what's happening? We have all this money going in on the under. Take the over. You're going to win. Nice. Scott just made my case for the game of why I'm hitching my wagon to Army here. Army can score. This isn't the uh, Army that we're used to seeing here. Think about all the things we know about Navy. Navy wants to run the ball. Army runs the ball better. Navy has a really good mobile quarterback. Army's quarterback is just as mobile and probably better than Navy's quarterback. For those very reasons, I'm hitching my wagon to Army. And what I love about this game is I was talking about this on my radio program the other day. The amount of trash talk, the memes yeah. coming in from both the Army people and the Navy people. This is fantastic. It's one of the best games of the year. Yeah. I love Army minus seven. All right, guys, we have waited long enough. It's time to give the people what they want. Scott's ready to give his long shot, plus our resident degenerate, Jason yeah. Hammer, yeah. will bet on a game Let's that go. involves two teams you've probably never even heard of. It's all coming up next on All Indiana Bets. The Long Shot, presented for the people by Caesar Sportsbook. Oh, here you go. Oh, we got to get down to business you. here. This we got to get this. down to business. Well, folks, we are about to make some history here as I balance my drink on my belly. Uh, <laughs> an Indiana you Bets. can do that too? I, yeah, it's a trick <laughs> for the, all three of us. Um, hey, Rachel, we, did you see who this was sponsored by? 
Oh, Caesar's I think it was Sportsbook. Sportsbook. Cheers to that. Uh, that's me. I'm the one that's sponsored by Caesar's <laughs> Sportsbook. <laughs> she uh, literally gets a paycheck. I get a paycheck from Caesar's, but I you're know, sponsored but by I them? I get it sponsored as I don't think it's quite as good. Uh, I will also mention that if you watch the NFL show, tomorrow I will be going for seven or eight in a I row. I saw that. Uh, on the long shot. Outright winners. These underdogs are outright winners. Haven't been quite as good on the colleges, but this is college basketball. And when I saw this line, and I always put on my glasses for the long shot, because oh, it's a get down to business. Uh, this is a situation, this game is being played in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It's called the Pentagon. It's a really cool like uh, stadium to play basketball in. Uh, it'll be almost all Creighton fans. This is a home game. It's like two hours from Omaha, Sioux Falls. I'm going to tell you right now, Creighton is not the same team they were. I'm still not sold on BYU, though. I love Creighton in this matchup. Five and a half is way too much. I think this is a last-minute kind of game. So take the five and a half and the Blue Jays against BYU. All right, so that was your first ever basketball pick then, huh? I think I've made one other. Uh, one other? One other so far. But I've, I've made them many times in the past. All right, now with racing, I know de degenerates. I know them really well. Yes, Got a lot yes. of those in racing. But this is the degenerate special. Hammer <laughs> got a head start. The king of all degenerates. Yes. Uh, he got a head start on the basketball plays. Last week, he gave out Eastern Washington as four and a half point favorites against Omaha. Eagles won by double digits. So we're off to a pretty good start. All right, Hammer, let's uh, make it 2 and 0 here. Yes. Can you do that? We can Which do that. Obscure random game. Are you betting on this week? Now remember, these obscure random games pay the same as if you win Super Bowl money, right? So let's talk about Troy at Tennessee Tech. Okay. What's Troy's last name, by the way? I don't even know this McClure. guy. McClure. Okay, very so good. So Troy has played a pretty good non-conference schedule. They've taken on Butler. They've taken on the Florida Gators. Tennessee Tech, also pretty good non-conference schedule. They've taken on the Tennessee Volunteers. So these teams are pretty equal here, right? They're about the same in free throw percentage, three-point percentage, defensive uh, prowess. They're pretty much ranked the same when you look at the Ken Palm ratings. But where there's a difference is in offensive production. Troy, they play at a much faster pace, which means you're getting more possessions per game. I like Troy in this spot. They're getting points. Again, this is going to be a close one. All things are equal. I've got the team getting points, and they play at a faster pace. Give me Troy plus two and a half. Sprinkle that money line. A little, add a little bit of spice. Time for another break. Stick around, though. The best bet is yet to come here on All Indiana Bets. The guys will give you their best bets of the day. Plus, Hammer will show you how to turn five bucks into 60. It's all coming up right after this break. Stick around. The best bet is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. It's best bets time, baby, as I sit here and <laughs> suffer with my Sprite as the boys drink <laughs> their uh, whiskey drinks. We're I'm drinking the bourbon it, done right. But I'll right. do what I have yeah. to do Can to be here. Can we talk about that for a second? Because during the commercial break here, our amazing executive producer, Peggy, runs in here she thinking that I'm such a degenerate that I gave Rachel he an alcoholic vodka beverage. in my drink, which, let's be honest, Hammer, would <laughs> like, likely happen. Right. Like, I'm a degenerate, <laughs> but that's only when it comes to my betting. I'm not going to give the pregnant lady a hard <laughs> drink here. Come I was on. surprised they didn't scroll across the screen. Hammer did not <laughs> deliver Oh. A spiked sprite. So <laughs> the amount of disclaimers they have to yep. have just nowadays, for me yes, is staggering. Yeah, mm. I'm surprised they do the show. All right, guys, give me your best bets. Let's let's uh, move this along here while you before Hammer gets too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start us off here. Um, I like Kentucky in this matchup against Notre Dame today. Now Kentucky had a pretty tough opening game. They opened up the season against Duke lost that game. So what does Kentucky do? They schedule a series of games against opponents they can beat the brakes off of. Does that get you any better? I think Kentucky's case, it does. Calipari's a guy that if you give him enough time, he will get these guys ready to go. Kentucky's better coached. Uh, Notre Dame's coming off an embarrassing effort against Boston College. They've had a tougher schedule, but they haven't really done anything with it. Kentucky picks up that first win on the road today. I like the Wildcats minus five. 
I just want to say, I think Notre Dame hasn't played quite as well ever since Mike Bray stopped wearing the mock turtle. Uh oh. Yes. Not the probably the worst look. Love a in mock turtle. No, you do not. <laughs> the cousin uh, Eddie. My dad kind of rocks a mock turtle. I'll say it right now. <laughs> so. I am all over Ohio State. At the start of the year, I said I thought Purdue would win the Big Ten, but if you wanted to get some good odds, Ohio State would have been my second team to put money on. They'd struggle early in the year because they're missing a couple players, especially Justin Suey. But they found their se themselves. They beat Duke. They beat the crap out of Penn State. And they're just marching now. Wisconsin has one player, Jonathan Davis, who can really score. But if you take him out of the game, they're kind of like a team that has a hard time getting past 50. I like the Buckeyes in this, minus four and a half. All right, you guys, it's balling on a budget time. Let's get right into it. Hammer, tell us what you got. We are going to turn five bucks into 60 bucks. That's how we get down here at All Indiana Bet. Love it. So this is a parlay bet. And again, I've always said parlays are kind of sucker bets. But when you only got five bucks to play with here, what do you got to lose? I like UCLA uh, Marquette game. We're going to go over 148 and a half. Kentucky minus five against the Irish. We talked about that one. This is a great rivalry game. This is a physical fist sure fight of the year. Yeah. Cincinnati and Xavier. We're going to go over in that one. That There's a chance that game could go down to the wire. You could even get overtime. It's happened before. And how about Valpo, the artist formerly known as the Crusaders? Uh, we're going to lay the four against Charlotte. Valpo at home tonight. You make these bets. You put just $5 down. You could have 60 bucks at the end of the night. Your toes are tapping. We are cooking, guys. It's halftime for us. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll keep the college basketball conversation going. Where will the Hoosiers Tapping. finish in the Big Ten this season? And will Purdue bounce back tomorrow? We'll discuss next in Feeling It or Fading It. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you're enjoying the show today. Uh, this next segment is one we like to call Feeling It or Fading It. I love the names of these segments. So fun. <laughs> uh, pretty self-explanatory, though. I'll give it the guys a bet, and if they like it, they'll say they're feeling it, and if they don't, then they'll say fading it. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, everybody. First up, despite Thursday's heartbreaking loss to Rutgers, Purdue is still, at least for the next 48 hours, ranked number one in the country, numero uno for the first time in program history. And Jaden Ivey is a big reason why the sophomore guard has been electric this season, averaging over 15 points and five rebounds per game. Ivey currently has the fourth best odds to win the Wooden Award, which is given annually to college basketball's best players. So Hammer, we'll start here with you, buddy. Uh, Ivy at plus 1200. Are you feeling it or fading it? I am fading this one. And listen, Ivy is going to be a first round pick, possibly a lottery pick. But here's what's going to happen. When some of these other teams get into conference play, i.e. Gonzaga, they're going to start rattling off win after win. And you're going to see a guy like Timmy's numbers substantially increase. Um, the Big Ten is just too tough right now. And we saw the other night you know, Purdue's not invincible. So as good as Ivy is, I'm fading this. I think this is ultimately going to be Timmy's award with Gonzaga. All right, Scott, what about you? I love how Purdue plays basketball. And a big part of how Purdue plays basketball is being a team, team, team. It's all 15 and five are his stats. Those are not Big Ten Player of the Year, let alone right. National Player of the Year. And as you mentioned, as they get into conference season and there's battles and all these, there's so many different players that can score points for Purdue. And wait till Dookie V gets a hold of his oh. guy over the freshman, the Blue Devils. Um, there's just not going to be, Purdue is not a sexy team, but it's a team that will win but Jay Nivey's not going to be player of the year. I love you called him Dookie D. Yeah, that, by totally. the way, I totally caught that, by the way. Yeah. It doesn't sound too great. All right, this next one isn't so much a bad edit as it's just an interesting conversation to be had, and that conversation centers around Indiana basketball, which is what we all love. After winning their Big Ten opener against Nebraska, the Hoosiers built a 22-point lead on the road at Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin on Wednesday, only to see it whittle away in the second half. Now IU was picked to finish seventh in the conference preseason. That's out of 14 teams. So Hammer, let's ask you first, uh, based on what you've seen so far this season, do you think they're going to stay in that top half? Or are you fe feeling or fading? I'm feeling the top half. Now, I'm not talking about one through four. IU is not ready for that. But if you're talking about that sixth position, seventh position, why not? I think they're going to be better coached than they were a year ago. True. And the Big Ten is just so balanced. Uh, Rutgers knocking off Purdue the other night as a 14-point underdog at the time of tip-off in that one. It's a war every single night in the Big Ten. Yeah. And Indiana's got arguably one of the best college basketball individual players in the nation and Trace Jackson Davis. Indiana could be in sixth or seventh place, so I'll buy that one. I'm feeling it. All right, I love it. What about you? I am um, not feeling or fading. I'm calling out. I'm failing it. Ooh, I do not. It. I do not failing. know. They are seven is probably about where I see them. The Big Ten, as you said, very balanced. There are two upper tier teams as far as I look at it this year. Michigan's not reached that level yet. They are still struggling without a point guard. Guess who else is struggling without a real point guard? Indiana. You've got Trace Jackson Davis, and I think Race Thompson has been playing wonderful basketball. He's doing all all the small things but man those guards at the end of the Wisconsin game at the end of the Syracuse game they just don't come through and I just can't buy a team that doesn't have legit guards who can take care of the ball they turn the ball over too much I think there's a real chance that Indiana could go eight or nine in the Big Ten I hope not but I see that as a possibility all right, guys, we are coming up. We have been handing out winners. He's been handing out winners ever since the show started. I've watched it. He's been hot. And after he is a hot. week off, he is hot. He is the back. Cash the man, cash baby. man is Let's set go. to join us next here on All Indiana Bets. Stick around. Hey, welcome back everyone to All Indiana Bets. This is a segment we like to call Wise Guy Winners. My name is Peter Hood. That, after a week off, he is back. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan Cashman. Cashman, you were sorely missed on last week's show, but you're back now better than ever. Transitioning here in this segment from college football plays to college basketball plays for the first time. We know how good you were picking college football this season, so let's get off to a good start with hoops here. What's your first play of the day? All right, thanks, Peter. We're going to take uh, Colorado State today on the money line. They are in a neutral site game in Texas against Mississippi State. Uh, both teams here rated in the top 50 in the Kim Palm ratings. The Colorado State, though, undefeated 9-0, only unbeaten team left uh, in the Mountain West Conference this year. They're led by a really good guard, David Roddy. He's averaging 20.9 points per game this season. Put up 36 in a 14-point win at Creighton uh, earlier this year, and he shoots nearly 47% from three-point range as well. Colorado State coming in, they lead the nation in field goal percentage, and they're also second in three-point. I really like this Colorado State offense. I'm going to take them today on the money line against Mississippi State in this neutral site. I love that pick, Cash. Man, Roddy, I think, is an All-American candidate. He's been balling all year. And I love this next pick from you as well. Hammer and I talked about it on last week's show. We've been fading Omaha. Both of us have all season long. And you're going to do the same, correct? I am. The, uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi going into Omaha tonight. There was uh, some pick out there at some books this morning. I'm going to take them uh, pick them on the money line. Uh, Corpus Christi comes in. They're off to an eight and one start. Omaha, like you said, not very good. Off to a one and eight start. Both teams are rated in the three hundreds and uh, all of college basketball, so they're not really th thought very highly of. Corpus Christi five and one against the spread. Their last six on the road. Omaha two and eight. Their last ten at home. And five and fourteen against the spread. Their last nineteen versus a team with a winning record, which would be Corpus Christi here today. I'm going to take uh, Corpus Christi on the money line here, going into Omaha. All right, so there's two picks for you. First two picks of the college basketball season from Cashman on All Indiana Bets. That's just the tip of the iceberg, Cashman. If people want more hoops picks from you, where do they go? Go to the website, cashmanwins.com. You can get uh, everything I send out to my clients for one year, $52 at the dollar a week. As far as I'm concerned, the best offer in the business for the amount of work I put into this. That's the cashmanwins.com. All right, Cashman, appreciate your time. Thanks uh, for waking up early and doing this, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Thank you, Peter. 
You can tell Peter doesn't have any kids. <laughs> Rolling out of bed at 1142, yeah. cash man. How about that degenerate special-esque pick by the cash man right there? Wow. Yeah. Fading Omaha. That's really helping our ratings. Another <laughs> guy picking a school that no one's even going to have to watch the game. But go ahead, cash man. We're Keep sorry making money. for making you money, Indiana. <laughs> We're yeah. sorry. Our thanks, though, to the cash man. Uh, Scott, you like that Colorado State pick, though, huh? I like it, but... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a real man, not a cash man. I'm not just betting the money line. I am betting the spread. Uh -oh. It's minus two. Shots now, fired. Now, Shots Alan, fired. Uh, he did bring up some great points. The offensive efficiency of Colorado State is great. They don't turn the ball over. They really shoot it well from three. Their field goal percentage is great. I love teams like that. If you remember, my best bet for football for the bowl games was Mississippi State. They're playing Mississippi State. I'm fading Mississippi State when it comes to basketball. That team has really had to reboot themselves. They lost a lot of players from last year. And Colorado State's the best team in the Big West. They are an NCAA tournament team. Love them today. All right, Hammer, you're on Eastern Illinois, so tell us uh, what you like about them. Eastern Illinois taking on the Butler Bulldogs today. 22 and a half is the line here. And hold on for a second. Oh man, I'm smelling this amazing peach oh, from Evan Wood. It is the Quit best. rubbing it in, bro. Oh, this, <laughs> this smells so good. It has to be so and good. It's really good. <laughs> this really smells good. like this smells like a trap. That's what this <laughs> game smells like. Oh. Because Butler's coming off their best effort of the year, a road win at Oklahoma. So this means. Butler's gonna be flat. Here comes Eastern Illinois getting 22 and a half. Look, Butler's going to win the game. There's no doubt in my mind Butler's going to win this one, but I don't think it's by 22 and a half. So be Pac-Man, scoop up those points. Eastern Illinois plus 22 and a half against a flat Butler squad. Now this is a fun fact about Eastern Illinois. Do you know where that's at? It's in the eastern part of Illinois. There you go. Sounds it's, like it. It's in Charleston, which is about 50 minutes from Terre Haute. So it's not a long oh, bus not ride far. for Eastern Illinois. See, I thought it was in Wisconsin. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, all their fans are going to come to Hinkle because they want to see it all 20. Oh, so it's going to be a good turnout. They go there. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait to watch that. You did make me want to watch that game. Now I know why Mackenzie needed a day off. Keeping these men in check <laughs> is literally a You work with horses, right? Usually. Yes, much easier. Stallions today. Stallions. Wow. today. Yeah. All right. When we will continue here, we get back. Not only Hammer is teasing you with alcohol, but we'll head over to the Oakmont. Our mm. girl Lexi is going to show All us right. how to make a blackberry bourbon sidecar with Evan Williams, which will be on the top of my list after my nine months stint is out. <laughs> <laughs> On the Rocks is coming up next. On the Rocks is brought to you by Evan Williams. Bourbon done right. Hello, friends. Welcome back to On the Rocks. Brent Holberson with Heaven Hill Brands here. Coming to you from the Oakmont today, downtown Indianapolis, just off of Mass Avenue uh, on Delaware Street. And have the wonderful Lexi here to make us a cocktail today. And uh, we have our Global Whiskey Ambassador, Mr. Bernie Lovers, with us. So welcome, both of you. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Outstanding. Good. Great Bernie? to be here. Good, Great good. to be at the Oakmont. You're going to make us a beautiful blackberry bourbon sidecar here. Yes, I'm I am. excited. Yep. What do we got today? All right. So this is going to start off with Evan Williams, 1783. And then that is our new formula that has actually raised the proof from 86 proof to 90 proof. Give a little more flavor there. Add some lemon juice for some extra flavor. Mm -hmm. Also some blood orange liqueur. Nice. And then to top that off, we're going to add blackberry jam to this. And we do get this locally, so. Okay. Put some of your jam in there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then we will strain this over top of some rocks. Ooh, beautiful color. And just to give it the final touch, we're going to add blackberry and lemon to that. Nice. There you go. Would you like to try it? I would love to. Well, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Cheers. The blackberry Cheers. bourbon sidecar. Yes. Oh, wow. I can say that's my jam, and it's using some jam. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us on The Rocks. Join us next time, and be sure to check out the Oakmont downtown Indianapolis. Cheers. And again, every week, Evan Williams is gracious oh. enough to give us a fully stocked bar for this show. 
God bless you guys. Yeah, I'm already through this first one. <laughs> All right, let's recap what Scott and I have got on the board today. These are our plays for today. First up, this is a bowl game. Tennessee minus four and a half. <sighs> Sorry, Purdue fans, but it sounds like your two best players, offensively and defensively, will not be in this game. It's not official yet, but it's leaning that way, which means now is the time to jump on that low number with Tennessee. Their quarterback's gonna play. Army, minus seven. The big game of day today, Army versus Navy. Army does everything better than Navy, and they try to play the same game. Um, play number three, this is your degenerate special. Troy, getting two and a half against Tennessee Tech. This was four and a half last night. I still like it at two and a half. Don't be afraid to think about the money line right there in our degenerate special. Kentucky on the road at South Bend today. Kentucky will pick up that first road win. Go ahead and lay the five points. And last but certainly not least, Eastern Illinois in Hinkle Fieldhouse against Butler. Butler's going to win. Butler's not going to cover. That's too many points. Those are my plays. Scott, what do you got? I think there's a traffic jam on I-70 right now. All the people coming to see from <laughs> Eastern Illinois. Mississippi State, we're talking uh, football in this situation here. Love them. Mike Leach has a serious vendetta against Texas Tech. He gets to feed that vendetta. Army, Navy, over 35. This game has went under 15 straight times. What idiot would go against that? This idiot here. <laughs> I have guy. the facts. What a story that'll make when I say I broke the jakes. Okay, so Creighton plus five and a half. I got to tell you right now, that is too many points to give Creighton, which is basically a home game in Sioux Falls. We're going to go with Ohio State minus four and a half. Right now, I feel like Ohio State and Purdue are right there with each other. When Justin Suey gets back, I love Chris Holtman's team in that situation. And Colorado State, kind of a team to follow this year early on. You can make a lot of money off of this team because this key team can shoot it and they don't turn it over. All right, so those are our picks. But coming up next, even though McKenzie's not here, we still have a Mick pick as racing Rachel McLaughlin will have her version of the Mick pick. That is coming up next. Do not go anywhere. This is All Indiana Bets. All Indiana Bets, presented for the people, powered by Caesar Sportsbook. Hey there, it's me, Kenny Maine. As a cartoon, but for adults, because we're talking betting, so yeah, not for kids. This is a very serious symposium on the betting line, the point spread, or just the spread. Call it what you want, but it's easily explained. Let's say Team A is favored to win, and the people who make the line on the game, some call them Vegas, set the point spread at six and a half. But you think Team B is either going to lose by a margin less than six and a half or win outright, which is what people call covering. All right, Team A wins the game 20 to 14. Now, you're sad for Team B because in real life, the guys lost. No talking on the plane. But in your life, because they covered the spread, you won. You just took six and a half points and effectively won the game 20 and a half to 20. Weird score. Take that, Team A. You, take your money. Now, I'll be back as a cartoon another time. Thanks to our guy, Kenny Main for dropping some knowledge. Okay, you guys, there's no McKenzie today, sadly, but I'm going to cover for her. It's time for a Mick pick, because I'm still a Mick. This is the McLaughlin version of the Mick pick, and since the guys each place an early bowl bet, I figured I might as well do the same. I'm going to take my Ball State Cardinals. There they chirp, are. Chirp, 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 chirp baby. Ugh. And uh, they're at plus four and a half against Georgia State on Christmas Day. Fun fact. Head coach Mike New got his first ever win against GSU, so I'll take the cards to cover the four and a half points down in Alabama. Been to a bowl game, used to work for the Ball State calendar or Cardinals. It was honestly the most fun working for Coach Hope. I, oh, I need a banana phone. Where's my well, banana Well, I just got a phone call uh -oh. from the producer. Peter, his segment got uh, thankfully cut to this week. <laughs> but he did take Houston uh, minus three in basketball. Okay. And Minus two and Purdue Fort Wayne minus three and a half. Um, so uh, put all your money in that and then send a message to Peter. 
Rachel, thank you so much hey, for being here today. Give me nuts. Are you coming back tomorrow? I'm coming back tomorrow. And we are NFL's seeing you day. tomorrow. Yes, all right. I'll be here tomorrow. At noon. noon to one. All noon to one. Best, the NFL edition. Good luck on all your bets, everybody. May the odds be ever in your favor. We will talk to you tomorrow, noon to one, on all Indiana bets.